Welcome to the Cougar Cast here at the Kokomo Post Sports. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, and this is a place to get all the information on what's going on inside the athletic department at IU Kokomo. And joining us once again for today's massive show, it's my guy, Grant Patterson. He is the Assistant Athletic Director at IUK for Communications. Grant, welcome in for a pretty big show. Yeah, big show. Missed out on last week. Busy times for the both of us. So good to be back in here and then good to have some student athletes on the show for the first time of this school year. You're correct. Later on in the show, Kaylee Lyons and Julia Sanders, a couple of volleyball players, will be joining us. Get to hear about their stories, why they decided to play volleyball at IUK and a lot more stuff about them as athletes. And speaking of athletes at IUK, we've talked a lot about athletes that have won conference awards on soccer on the volleyball teams and right now in this week we have an rsc offensive and defensive player of the week awards handed to a couple soccer players mckenzie gibbons and kaylee moore yeah both both of them have been uber impressive throughout the season um it continued last week though first we'll touch on Mackenzie Gibbons offensively, she multi go, multiple goals in each of the two wins last week. Uh, two wins that improved the IU Kokomo record. Those were the first two conference wins of the season. Started off uh, 0 1 and 1 in River mm. State's conference action. So two straight wins that automatically vaults you high up into the standings. I th- think we're in third or fourth okay. in the conference okay. standings. Um, have have three straight road matches, maybe even more. Can't remember exactly, but I know we have at least three straight road matches. So it was big to get those two wins last week, one on the road, one at home. Uh, both of the shutout variety, but but goal scoring wise, Mackenzie Givens scored the final two in each game, I believe. I don't think she scored the first one at midway, but she okay. definitely scored a pair in each game. It was a, it was impressive. She now leads a team in goals with five. She leads a team in shots on goal with seventeen. So I mean, it's what we expected yeah. from her a yeah. little bit to to be high on the leaderboard for the or on the statistics page, if you will, for IU Kokomo women's soccer this year. Her, Kelsey Hoot, veteran leadership there, expected to score more of the goals. But to see her score four in one week after having just one previously in the entire year, that's what we've been looking for. And and she delivered in a big way last week. So shout out to Mackenzie Givens there, well-deserving. I thought that was the first time this year where I've known going into the into the nominating and voting portal for the conference awards that that we should sweep the women's soccer with, uh, with what Givens and Kylie Moore did last week that it was just uber impressive. So on to Kylie Moore. I think she had four shutouts already on the season. Um, now, now she has six shutouts on the season. Five of those shutout wins. Rio Grande was a zero-zero draw, so counts as a shutout for um, more power to her. Six shutouts in one season is incredible, but not just a testament to her, but to the back line of our defense. So, so shout out to all those involved there. Kylie Moore had 20 saves on the weekend goal Man. for us. Um, call her Tex. So if you hear me reference her as Tex, that's who I'm talking about. Tex was Tex was impressive. I think she had nine saves in the win at Midway, 11 saves Saturday, and including a couple tough saves at, at some crucial points in the game when it was still a close match. So, so Kylie Moore has been dominant all year in goal. I think she started all but one match for the okay. Cougars. Okay. And uh, Mackenzie Gibbons has probably started all but one or two, and I think those one or two is when she was struggling to get back to 100%. So, so big time play from a couple of upperclassmen, one being a senior and one being a junior. They've been around the block a while, uh, just getting into River State's conference play. Four matches in now, and we're, we're sitting pretty two one and one with still have a match at the leaders next week, Oakland City. Um, a couple winnable matches uh, before that, so we'll see how things shake out. You know their success is great. I know Sohaila Akavina has been working and pushing and preparing the team for this part of the season where, hey, things didn't go great. They had a little issue in Georgia with weather. Sure. And then things just didn't really go the way they wanted it to. All of a sudden, now you get a conference play on a two-match win streak. You got a couple players that are getting recognized by the conference. Had, I think Tex won a national award earlier yeah. this year. Yep. So their success coming at this part of the year, which can lead right into the conference tournament, which they could be successful there too. Yeah, stick to the process, I, I'm sure, has been uh, – so what's – one of the things Sohaila and staff have been preaching, when you schedule a non-conference schedule, that's probably – top 30, 40 in the yeah. nation in terms of strength of schedule, that that should tell you something there, that they're willing to get better, take their lumps mm-hmm. as, as the season moves on, because knowing that your overall record doesn't can get you an at-large bid. Yes, yeah. it can get you an at-large bid to the tournament, but it doesn't get you your um, uh, your 
automatic qualifier, mm-hmm. I guess. Yes, Struggling yeah. for the words there, but it finally came to me. So it, it, we're getting we're getting on the right path uh, going into conference tournament time. Have a few more conference matches, probably four or five left this season, and then and then it'll be conference tournament time. So playing for seeding in the conference tournament, playing for home field advantage in the conference tournament, and you see what we've done the past few years in the conference tournament. We played every match at home uh, because of our strong play in the regular season, two one and one. So have a chance to clinch home field advantage in the in the River States conference postseason this year and see if we can't make it three straight NAI tournament appearances. You know, another team at IUK that is expected to play in the national tournament once again is the volleyball team, the Cougars volleyball team. They're 21 and four, a 14 match win streak. They're rolling. They rolled last year. They're rolling once again this year. They haven't lost in a long time. And I think it may have been the last loss may have been in August, not September. So it's been quite a long time. I don't know that for sure. So don't don't fact check me and say I was wrong. I just I, I don't Throwing know. Throwing that out there. Yeah, I do know that there was another another young lady who was a freshman that is – if there's a freshman of the year award for volleyball, she might get that. Yeah, there is. There is. Maya Grigsby, once again, is the RSC attacker of the week. Grant, she's on a roll, man. She started off hot as a in the first match. And she just kept that thing going. Yeah, and she started off hot in the first match, as we mentioned before. Set a couple of set one school record in that first match uh, for. It, it was just super impressive to step in. That first match was against the number six team in the nation as well. That should be noted. So. It's crazy to say this, but when she won the NAI Defender of the Week award, I thought that was her best week yet because she did it in all every phase of the game. But uh, I think she may have even topped that this week, earning her Attacker of the Week honors. I was hoping that I would wake up this morning to an email from the NAI asking for some pictures and some more supporting info because I thought she had what it took to win NAI Attacker of the Week this year or this week for women's volleyball. Didn't get that uh, recognition. Good thing is she's a freshman. She's literally just over halfway done with her freshman campaign. So plenty of time to get that taken care of. But man, I think it's up to four Attacker of the Week awards and one Defender of the Week honor honor for her. So um, it's been impressive from the time she stepped on campus, what she's been able to accomplish. Last week was no different. Um, Had at least 14 kills in every match, was averaging above three kills per set between those three matches. Uh, Had had 15 kills and 15 digs in Saturday's match against Shawnee State, I believe. Um, Friday, she recorded her highest kill total of the week with 20. So, so it was just more impressive play. I think her, I think her, um, kill career high for kills is 27. So 20 is not far off no. of that. You don't, you don't get many, uh, 20 kill performances, especially in a three set match, a three set match. that's not particularly close. So, so really just another, another strong week by our freshman Maya Grigsby. And it just goes to show when you have, uh, when you have so much talent on the, on the roster, there's only so many people that they're able to stop. And, man, many teams have struggled to stop Maya Grigsby this fall. I will tell you that. People have been struggling to stop this team that Heather Hayes leads as well. Last week was homecoming week. Yeah. And I want to t- ask you to touch on that here in a second. But during homecoming week, the volleyball team hosted three matches. I think it was a Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. They lost only one set in those three matches. And, Grant, they're on a roll once again. I know we expect it. But to see it happen year after year after year, it has to be fun to watch. Man, it's awesome to watch. We knew uh, we knew we had the chance to run the table this year in conference play, but it's another thing to do it. It's another thing to do it two years in a row. Yeah. They ran the table last year in River State's conference play, not dropping a match and only dropping probably – three or four total sets. Well, they're in that territory again this year. Um, it, ha- it had been a while since we lost a set up until this past right, Saturday. Right. So it was, a, it was a strong match played by uh, – Shawnee State, Shawnee State, I think surprised some people, but they came out on a mission, and I think that that mission, honestly, and no, no knock on them, I think that mission was to take a set, take a set. Nobody else has done that in a long time. Um, IU East couldn't do it in our home match last week. Um, the only team that had in conference play was St. Mary of the Woods, and and. They brought the fight to us, and that's exactly what Shawnee State did in Saturday's match. But, man, it was awesome to see Coach Hayes' squad rebound uh, from that from that first set loss. Um, it was a pretty good crowd, too. Saturday, Saturday. I know it's at 12 o'clock start, yeah. so it's not technically morning, right. but that's essentially a Saturday morning match, especially when you play 12 hours before. You know, it, it's, it's, it's different. Not many college sports do it like that. And uh, so 
it's a weird thing to adjust to. I thought they adjusted well. They still didn't have their best once in that match, I would say, and still ran through uh, Shawnee State in sets two, three, and four. Really cruised a victory in those final three sets, and it looked like a completely different team than the team that dropped the opener. So to see them get some adversity, that's something that is going to be needed if we're going to um, advance even further than we did last year or do what we did last year and make it to the Sweet 16 of the NAIA tournament. So... Um, I think Heather Hayes is okay with the, the yeah. test. Uh, it came from an unfamiliar, unlikely source, I would say. But man, you need to go through some adversity as one, as a team, in order to in order to just be prepared for those high intensity moments later in the year. And I think we lack that at times in the River States Conference. But to get some of that from an unfamiliar, unlikely source on Saturday was huge for the team and and the program going forward. What? was it like being in the midst in your seat during yeah. homecoming week last week it was awesome we touched on it a little bit in the live show um i've been around i've been around iu kokomo athletics for a few years but first year wasn't on the homecoming committee or anything but looking forward to joining that next year and getting a better grasp yeah. of things and how that works and see how we can implement sports even more because when i think of homecoming i think it revolves around a big game. Correct. So um, normally it's football. We don't have football, as Coach Hayes touched on with you on the live on Facebook. Uh, it, so that gives other sports an opportunity. So that means we had two uh, home volleyball matches that had events going on before them. Tuesday we had the Angel Walk for domestic violence and sexual assault survivors. Uh, most of our student athletes and our coaching staffs were out there walking with uh, plenty of members from the community. Um, I know Tracy Martino, uh, a community member and business owner, I believe, she donated uh, free hot dogs to each, awesome, of the, each of the first 100 or 200 yeah. people, I believe, to grab a ticket. So, so big thanks to her putting on something like that that's not only welcoming members of the IU Kokomo community, but the Kokomo community as well is crucial to get, to get our name out there, not just for IU Kokomo Athletics, because I still think we're undervalued in this town. I think uh, just in general, to see all the good things that IU Kokomo is doing as a whole. But then Friday night was awesome once again. You got to see that a bit. Um, Could have gotten a cool homecoming shirt like Jay did. Um, tailgate before the match, some good food from Rozzy's catering, and and then come in and, and watch a – we beat Alice Lloyd pretty handily. And just come and watch a dominant volleyball team, man, from start to finish. It's How could you not How could you not be entertained with the uh, – with the entertainment value, seven dollars to watch the top right? ten, top eleven team in the nation, and people mistaking our people are mistaking if they think that the NAI level isn't a high level of of play. Oh, it definitely is. I will say that Grant and I have been talking about other ways to enhance coverage of volleyball or soccer or anything going on at IUK athletically. Can't say what it is we might have happened yet, but follow us specifically on Facebook because there might be some things popping up that will be enjoyable to help enhance. What is going on right now? Because we touched on volleyball. We touched on soccer. Esports, they got cross country. There's tennis. There's golf. There's a lot of sports. Basketball's right around the corner. All we want to do is help bring awareness and help shine a light on the talented athletes at IUK. Speaking of those athletes, Grant, do you have any comments about anything going on right now athletically at the school? I'd say uh – it's crucial right now in this two-week span uh, after Saturday's busy day, three home sporting events with women's golf at home, volleyball at home, and soccer at home. Now we enjoy a bit of a grace period. Teams, I, I should say I, Coach Heather Hayes is also our director of athletics, so she's her plate gets even busier when yeah. you're on the road. But for me, it, it's a nice little bit of 12 days where no home sporting events. So we're, we're not at home again until October 25th, I believe that's the Friday, against Rio Grande. So that'll be a big-time match. So definitely put that in your calendar. But for me, if you care and want to know about IUK athletics, it's so easy to it's so easy to follow along. Whether you're a social media person or not, you can follow us on our social media pages. We're pretty much IUK athletics on the on the social media what platforms that require there you go a there you go that you will, got it that require a handle man it's a struggle to talk today <laughs> but then Facebook where IU Kokomo Athletics and and IUKCougars.com whether it's me whether it's my student workers and Nathan Lazoya um, putting different articles on the website or just just uploading the box score I, I promise you I'll have the box score up yeah. within 30 minutes of every match ending you can learn about how the match went and if you want to wait and read the article we'll pretty much break it down play by play not a play by play you don't want to hear all 100 points of the volleyball match and how they happen but but the key points who went on runs when and where so you can't be here for 12 days we don't have any home sporting events but events but follow along um i've always got live stream links and if you really care about uh supporting iu kokomo you'll do just that
I appreciate Grant for coming on the show and I also am looking forward to talking to Kaylee Lyons and Julia Sanders, a couple of volleyball players at IUK. They're coming up next on the show, going to dive into why they chose to play volleyball at IUK and some other things about their stories. As the Cougar cast rolls on, I'd like to welcome into the show a couple of volleyball players on the Cougars volleyball team this year. To my right, first, it's a grad student from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Miss Kaylee Lyons. Kaylee, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. And to her right, it is a junior from Boxtown, Indiana. We talked about that earlier. Julia Sanders, also welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. We're going to stick with you first. Why did you decide to play volleyball at IU Kokomo? Ooh, so I actually didn't know that like IUK even existed before Ooh, okay. Coach Hayes showed up at one of my club practices and my coach was like, this is IU Kokomo. You should go talk to her. And then Heather was just, I never call her Heather, but that's what I <laughs> called her then. You might get in trouble. Um, <laughs> no, but coach, she was like, I'm Coach Hayes. And then like told me everything about it. And I realized like, you know, how successful they are. And then she got me to come on a visit here and I was like, whoa, Kokomo is nice. It yeah. has like, you know, sometimes it gets a bad rep, but yeah. it has a lot of things. And I loved the campus and like how she she portrayed it as a family mm -hmm. here. And then I met all the girls. I remember Kaylee was one of the like players that was, I think it was, there was like four of you that yeah. talked to my parents and I about <laughs> like just questions we had. And I was like, oh, I, I really like these girls. And really loved the coaches and how much I could tell that they cared for everyone and like wanted academics first um, and like volleyball is just an add-on on top of that that happens to be very successful and yeah I just loved everything about it and it was a great distance from home too so it kind of was the perfect mixture of everything. So it sounds like Kaylee did not destroy the visit at all. No, she actually did no, a good job. She made it a lot better and I remember like I had played her younger sister in okay. club and so I was kind of putting the pieces together and I was like whoa like Emma's really good. Kaylee's really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that means IUK is really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why did you decide to play volleyball at IUK? A lot of the things that Julia said, actually. Um, I really loved the family aspect. I liked Coach and Lori a lot. I liked how honest Coach was. My recruiting process was kind of crazy. Um, met with a lot of different schools, visited a lot of schools. They were all telling me I was their number one, and then the next week they would – Email me that they offered somebody else in my class in my position. Ooh. Yeah, still bitter. Yeah. But um, <laughs> coach wasn't like that. She let me know straightforward, like, when I would be playing, how much I'd be playing, what she saw of me in that upcoming year and in the future. And then something that really caught my eye about IUK, I loved the campus. Mm -hmm. It's so cliche, but you, st you get there and you know. I really did. I really, really did. And they have the business program you can get – your undergrad plus a master's, so they have a three, a four plus one okay. program, and yeah. I had so many credits from high school that I actually did it in a three plus one. Oh, nice. So I got my undergrad in three years, and then I spread my master's out for a year and a half so I could use my COVID year. Very smart. Yeah, I've been here for a while, but <laughs> I really do love it, and that was those are the reasons why I came here. So both of you girls are from towns that are quite far from Kokomo. Do either of you guys get homesick at all? Do you want to go or me? <laughs> uh, I'll go first. Okay. Just because, like, my freshman year was definitely – I was very homesick. I missed my family, even though I would see them. They would be at every game, but I still just, like, missed them throughout the week and stuff. And I had a lot of conversations with Coach and other girls. I remember her telling me to talk to, like, Audrey Strasma, who is our grad assistant now, and because she was, like, struggling with that when she was younger. And so just talking to all the girls about it, that helped me a lot. And then – which was like time, just time is going to help. And it really did. Like even spring season of my freshman year, I was much better. I was just, you know, used to being away from home, living with not people that aren't my family. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, now I would say, I mean, I still go home when I can, but it's not like I'm miserable or anything. Like I love being here and it's I've come a long way since my freshman yeah. year. But yeah, it's not too far of a distance either. It's not like No, that. no. Yeah. You were saying – what, south of Greenwood? Mm -hmm. What's that, like an hour and a half? Yeah, no, not even. It's no? Like <laughs> an hour and like five minutes, maybe. Oh, it's not bad so, at all. yeah, it's no. like you just get on 465. Yeah. Come straight up. So. And all the construction and everything has come straight up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You, did you get homesick? Um, Honestly, I told people And I say this. that, I'm going to cut in real quick, because yeah, you good. came during COVID. Yeah. So that had to be a whole different animal. Yeah. Uh, kind of. Yes, no. It was okay. weird being with... Like, meeting new people was different, for sure. Yeah. Um, 
But no, I felt like I was at a volleyball camp. Oh. Yes, so the entire year. Like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like I was at a volleyball camp. Okay. And then once season was over, I was like, oh, I'm at school. And I can – being – I was an hour 45 away. Yeah. So it was the perfect distance where I could go home if I really wanted to or I was like, oh, I don't want to drive that far. Mm -hmm. So – that sounds so bad, but it really didn't bother me. My family came to all the matches, too, like Julia's had. But, yeah, it just felt like a volleyball camp. It was so weird. It's kind of weird. It's kind of a good kind of odd feeling. I wouldn't yeah. think it's kind of like volleyball camp. Yeah. I've also never been, so I can't say, like, <laughs> I know what goes on. Y'all, I trust me. I don't know. I don't want to know. But I can only imagine when girls are together at a volleyball camp playing volleyball and doing all of the girly things in the free time yeah. saying that school feels like that. It had to make you feel good that you made the choice to be there, but then kind of confirming that you're in the right, right place. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Definitely did. What's been kind of the highlight of this year? Cause you guys are once again, successful. Like you were last year, like probably every year that you guys have been here. What's been the highlight of this year so far? I would say personally, just our, the way that we came out and played in our preseason tournaments, mm -hmm. we had one in Marion. It was Iowa's tournament. We played really well there. And then we had one in Fort Wayne. And then we went to Omaha. Yeah, yeah we went to Omaha, and we just did amazing above and beyond what people expected of us, outsiders expected of us. And we really started to get outside attention and mm -hmm. Raiders' attention. Yeah, And that just has meant the world to me personally as – a senior, a super senior, as this being my last year, yeah. just all the pieces kind of falling together. So that trip out to Omaha, and I forget, I think you guys went two and two out there on that trip, mm. and you ha are having a positive report. Yeah. The average person that goes on the website and sees two and two on a trip out there, that's not good. That's 500. That's yeah. average. Yeah. But you guys are basically confirming that, no, the record doesn't show what actually happened with the team. What was your kind of – observation of the team as you're playing about, hey, we lost, but we're doing a lot of really good things. Is that a good way to look at it? Yeah, I think that's how we looked at it, too. Like, two and two, you know, we knew that there were some hiccups in some games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could have won, should have won. But I think it – no, not our last match, but it was our second yeah. second day, first match was okay. when we played Northwestern. And, like, we had just lost one the day before, so it, like, would have been so easy for us to be like, oh, this trip is – but no, we realized like how hard we had worked for it, yeah. the money we had raised, and like we were out there to show show what we could do, and we had a chance to play the number two team in the nation. And I remember like us talking about it before about like how blessed we are to play such good competition, mm -hmm. and we need to go out and show what we can do. And even though we lost to Northwestern, like that, even after that match, like we were like, no, we compete with the top in the nation because we are also the top in the nation. And so I think that even after. Going two and two, we were very, like, we did have an optimistic outlook on it because we proved to ourselves what we knew we could do. We just had to, like, prove it to others, so. And might I add, we did lose to the number one ranked team, Northwestern, in five sets. Yeah. So close. So we, were, we were really close. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Statistically, yeah. we just should have won. Yeah, we should have like, won statistically, stats, yeah. Just don't even make sense. <laughs> it was such a good match. I got yes. chills. She was talking about it. <laughs> yes. What went wrong? Why'd you guys lose? We just couldn't finish. Yeah, like, I there was... I don't really know. We played so, so, so well. Mm -hmm. We were up majority of the sets, yeah, and then like, we would just let them come back in and okay. couldn't stop it. But yeah. I know that they were yeah. all super close. Like They were all like so 26, close. 26, 24. I yeah. think there was like a 28 in there maybe. Yeah. It was a very good game. So was that similar to the IWU match last year in, in the tournament, the national tournament, where it was like it was close, but – you guys just couldn't finish? Is that similar? Because I didn't see that one either, yeah. but I just know you guys lost to Iowa last year, who was really good. You guys beat yeah. them this year. So I'm like, okay, things are popping off, yeah. going very well. But was that match, in your in your mind, similar to Iowa last year, where it's like you guys just couldn't get over the hump? I guess I honestly, when we were playing Iowa this year, I was kind of comparing it to the Iowa of last year. Because, okay. okay. Just because of the sets that we won and lost, they were exactly the same. Okay. It was – but yeah. then in the fifth set, we won yeah. instead of losing last year. But um, I think, yeah, it was the same of how, like, close it was and stuff. Um, it's just a very good match, and I think it was a result of us not finishing in the very tight moments at yeah. the end. Yeah. What has been Heather Hayes' impact on you since you've been here at IUK? Emotional question. I, she, <laughs> I thought you were gonna start crying. <laughs> we'll so gay. We'll get some Kleenex, please. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, that's just 
just like a deep one. Um, do you want to go first? I can go, yeah. <laughs> I would say being an IUK and being under Heather's, I don't want to, I don't know, I was going to say Leadership. rule, but that's not it. <laughs> yeah. Leadership is a great <laughs> word. Oh my gosh. I think I've really grown up. Yeah. Uh, I think I came to college pretty mature, but yeah, I thought that. But here I am now. I feel like I've grown a lot tremendously as a person, as a player, as a teammate, as a leader, as a friend. Um, yeah, I'm just so thankful and blessed to have the opportunity to play the sport I love with the people that I love. So I'm really thankful to her for that. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, I feel like I also thought I was mature coming in, but I realize now like how naive I was about yeah. so many things. Like just she helped me getting through like the homesickness and learning how to be on my own and like what it looks like to I mean I've played volleyball my whole life but now volleyball is like just such a more important factor yeah. like now that we're working towards something bigger and I get like really hard on myself but mm -hmm. she's taught me like that volleyball is a game of mistakes and it's okay and like even just this past year she's like written me notes and stuff that just really helped me and yeah I feel like I'm a better player in person because of her because she like truly cares about you and yeah I mean she brought us all here for a reason and she like continuously tells us that you know we wouldn't be here if she didn't believe in us and have confidence in us and you know she, yeah she's the best <laughs> so one thing I like to do whenever we have athletes come in is tell some goofy story or about each other or a coach but I've never done it with Grant, and Grant's in the room now. Yes. And I know you're a talker. I could tell you're going to talk too. You may get a little shy first, but could you guys post both tell us a goofy story about Grant as you wrap up this show? And I don't care. You please go first. I think okay. you need some time. Okay. <laughs> Say about Grant. Um, this is actually yeah. First thing in my mind, I say this to Grant every time I see him. But we were at the IWU tournament mm -hmm. preseason, and Grant was there doing his job, you know, just granting it up. And I said, hey, Grant, thanks for making the trip. And he was like, yeah, Kaylee, it was really a short drive. He was like, no problem. And so I'll see him at the gym, and I'll say, hey, Grant, thanks for making the trip. It just, I think it annoys him, but I think it's funny. So I have a blast with that one. I dig it. I dig it. I know he's a large, large, large Purdue fan. Yeah. I didn't know. That's kind yeah, of, his, right. it's like one of his like bad traits. Yeah, yeah. It's a funny, we it's a funny trait, it. you know? It's it like, haha, you like Purdue, haha. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I would say <laughs> we were, it was the tournament that IUK had, yeah, this year. And we were all like sitting in the back, um, like hallway where all the coaches office are, offices are. And I just remember he came walking through and he was like, I found a wallet. Like, does anyone want this money? <laughs> no, we, were like, we were like, Grant, like, you need to find the owner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what ended up happening, but I just remember we were all sitting there eating and Grant just comes Strutting walking through. through like, I got a new wallet. Like, no, <laughs> find the owner. <laughs> Forget the owner. Y'all want this hundred dollar bill? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's what happened. Offering it off. <laughs> Oh, man, got to love them. I really appreciate both of you, you girls coming on, Julia and Kaylee, for coming on the show. Guys, this has been the Cougar Cast. We'll see you next time.